Hi, it's me JD and welcome back. Today's video will show you how I inventory and organize my clear stamp collection. I will show you the system I use for inventorying all of my stamps as well as some organization and storage tips. My personal rule is that when I buy a new stamp set, I have to put it in my inventory before I even use it. That way I can make sure not to buy it again and avoid doubles. And in the future, it makes it much easier to find that particular stamp set if I just want, you know, one particular like sentiment form from it or a design element from it. I do all of my inventory on my phone using this app. And FYI, this video is not sponsored by Apple. It's just, yeah, I have an iPhone, that's all. The app I use is a free app and it's called Airtable. According to their website, Airtable works like a spreadsheet, but has the power of a database. So when you pull the app up, it looks like this. And I have my own uh, database called Stamps and Dies, and this is how my inventory looks. Right now, it's in alphabetical order according to brand. You can also change the filter status to by name, by theme, by type. And these are the categories that I chose that works for me. Um, this is the example of the date in category. So I can see how long ago I purchased a stamp and if I used it yet. Now I will show you how Airtable works. I've got this new stamp set that I purchased from Simon Says Stamp. And so all I just entered in the brands and now I will enter in the name. And the name of the stamp set is usually like on the stamp set itself um, or it's on the back of the packaging. And then I'll enter that in the name category. Once the name is entered, then I will find the best fitting theme for the stamp set. And for this one, it looks like it's all sentiments. So I'm just gonna choose the sentiment theme. And after taking a, a closer look at the sentiments, I realized that they're, they're pretty funny. So I'm also gonna enter this under the theme of humor. I'm gonna create a new theme right on the spot and add it to my um, multiple choice list of themes. Then I will mark down the size of the stamp set, and this is a 4x6 it looks like. And do I have a coordinating die for this? Nope, I do not. And so with my camera phone, I'm going to take a picture of the stamp set. And what's great about Airtable is that when I take the picture, it doesn't actually save to my photo library, you know, and doesn't, therefore doesn't take up any um, space on my phone. It just uploads to directly to Airtable. So you don't have to worry about any storage limits. And so um, once I take the picture, it attaches it to this, uh, this entry. Now I will take some notes on this um, stamp set and the notes section is important for me because it's where I add my keywords. So when I'm inventorying my stamps, I'm also creating sort of a database so I can find it later. So I'm entering words that are particularly like meaningful to the stamp set. If I were to search for this particular word or this theme or this sentiment then this stamp set would would come up so if i'm searching for tacos or something snarky or something that says miss your face then i enter in all those keywords in under the notes section and when i go to search those keywords again this stamp set will appear um, under my search results I love that the interface is mobile friendly and desktop friendly. So I can do this either sitting at my desk or on the or you know on the go if I'm organizing at the kitchen table or something. So enter in my last two categories, the date in and if I've used it yet. And once I have that entered, you can see my entry now is added to my inventory. Now that I have this stamp set entered into my inventory, I'm going to organize it. So I throw away the packaging that it comes in because it's kind of flimsy and it's not meant for long-term storage anyway. So I use this storage pocket that's nice and durable. And then using my label maker, I make a label where the brand is on top and the name of the stamp set is on the bottom. Normally I don't do this one by one, I do this in chunks. So I actually like add all of my brand new stamp sets at once to my inventory. Then I add them all to storage pockets. And then once that's done, I make 
um, all of the labels for them. So it's kind of a zone defense versus man-to-man. -man. I think that's a lot more efficient anyway, at least for my system of stamp inventory and organization. Now that they are all in their pockets and have labels on them, I'm going to file them away into my storage containers. So I uh, categorize mine by brand. I used to categorize them by theme, but then there's a lot of overlapping themes. And so it just worked better for me to organize by brand. And I used the packaging that it, um, the paper packaging that it came from, um, just as a little more support. Um, and it's nice that it also kind of color codes them in a way as well. The bin I use is clear and it fits perfectly on my bookshelf. It's also not too heavy, like it doesn't hold a whole lot of stamps, which makes it not so heavy and it's uh, you know much easier for me to pick up and move around my desk or move around if I need to. And it also has a handy dandy um, little handle in front so it's easy to grab off the shelf as well. Now I'll show you how to set up an Airtable database if you wanted to. So once you download the, uh, the Airtable app, you're going to select create a new base. And this is just an example for all my YouTube subscribers. Once you've named your database, you're going to start creating categories and fields that you want to categorize your stamps and dies in. So um, you're going to go to the bottom and select customize fields. And you'll see that you can change the name of the field name. Um, right now it's name, but I'm going to change that to brand. And then um, I'm going, you can add different kinds of fields uh, and customize them. So my second uh, field is going to be the name of the stamp and you can select either if it's like gonna be a single line of text that you want the answer to be in or a multiple choice or a single choice even. And you can also reorganize um, these fields as much as you want. If you wanted the name of the stamp first, if you wanted the brand first, you can add and delete different fields. I love that this interface is really clean looking and it's really user friendly. You can have as many or as little fields as you want. This is totally customizable and you can get as granular or just as broad as you want to as well. And so now I'm gonna show you some different field options with different um, answer options. So for the um, type uh, question, I'm going to choose a single select. So I wanna choose different sizes. If this is gonna be a two by three or a you know four by six or a background stamp. I want those to be different, uh, like a multiple choice options. So I can just click and go instead of um, typing it out every time. And you can also color code these options, um, you know, just for those who are super OCD or they just like rainbows. And then um, I'm going to add another field here um, if it's uh, if it has a coordinating die, because that's important to me if um, if I know that a stamp set has a coordinating die. And so for that, I'll just mark down two options. It's very easy. It's either yes or no, and those do not have to be color coded. And that's pretty much it. From that point, your database, you know, is uploaded to the Airtable's cloud and, and it's pretty much set up. So now I'm going to go back to my original database and I'm going to add a stamp set in. I'm doing this to show you um, how easy it is to customize those fields, even as you're entering in different items. So I'm entering the stamp set and it's a four by eight stamp set, but I didn't have an option for it. So I just go to customize fields again, and then um, this is in the middle of the entry. I'm just adding a different uh, option as an uh, entry now, as an answer now. And then once I do that, I can now select four by eight as an option, and then proceed to complete the rest of this uh, this stamp set entry. And you can do that with, you know, Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, but I just like that this interface, again, is really mobile friendly. Another feature that I like is that um, it lets me use this spreadsheet as a database, as their tagline proclaims. Um, so after I'm done entering this stamp set, I can look up, you know, other Mother's Day stamp set that I have, and I could just go to the search bar and type in Mother's Day and I right away I can see what stamp sets I have in that theme or what I put 
um, you know, as a keyword for it. Um, but let's say I don't, I'm not searching for a Mother's Day stamp. Maybe I just want a stamp set that says the word mom in it. And so by just entering in mom, I could find all of my stamp sets that have the word mom either as a keyword or in the title. And here's another example of a stamp set with a coordinating die. Now this stamp set is a little more tricky um, when filling out the notes because it has so many different elements. It has critters, it has design elements, it has sentiments. And so I'm entering all that I see on there that all that I would, you know, future me would search down the road in order to um, find the stamp set. Um, roller coasters, balloons, ups and downs, amusement park, theme park. So, so just think of all the synonyms you have for all the different things you see in your stamp set when filling out the notes section if you choose to do it this way. And so once that's entered in, I'm going to um, just put my stamp set in my stamp pocket and Lawn Fawn's uh, packaging is a little too long, so I just ignore that warning, whatever. And then just trim off the excess and then it fits perfectly in the storage pocket. I'm not too particular about this part of it. And then I just stick the coordinating die on the back to keep them together. And then um, I go back to my handy dandy label maker and I'll attach a label. So for the oblong stamp sets, I use this huge storage pocket and um, it also uh, fits my larger stamp sets well, even though sometimes I have to, again, trim off the excess along the bottom. This pocket also works great for background stamps or just larger six by eight stamp sets. And so for my itty bitty stamp sets, I just normally put them together in one regular storage pocket um, just to save some cost. And I put the label multi on it. I inventory them separate, but I just put them in the same pocket. I hope you like my way of organizing and inventorying. Uh, let me know down in the comments how you organize your stamp collection. Thanks.